up YouTube, Topaz Ace back for another review, and this one's to that Little Duval and Charlemagne the God, Black Men Don't Cheat, and I'll give this one the yellow light just for the raw catchiness that's along with it, you feel me? And then there are a bunch of little elements within her that was pretty cool, but yet as it comes together as a full song, it's really not that good. Let's break this one down from the top, looking at the actual music genre that this is is pertaining to because this is more of the hip-hop comedic type direction as this is an emerging genre that's within hip-hop you feel me when you're looking at acts like say little dicky even though he got a different brand of comedy than what little duval have but yet you realize they're doing all but the same thing they're not really heavily focused and relying on dope punchline balls or anything it's more about cracking jokes and these jokes can be about themselves or situations that they be in either which way they're more about telling jokes than making dope punchlines but yet it all can go along to the same lines because a dope punchline can be a joke but yet you can tell the difference though and when you look at this man I'm sure many people automatically assumed that this could have been a garbage song because Little Duval is a comedian first you did, while Charlemagne the God is more of a radio personality first who tells a whole bunch of jokes to the point that people tell him all the time that he should do stand-up. And the culture ultimately questions this for a good reason, because when you look back in the history of hip-hop, you got individuals like, say, Shaq and Kobe, who reached a certain level of their careers as being basketball players first, that they decided, okay, I can go ahead and do this rap album and people will respect me. And all of this stuff was trash but this is a concept that you can't put a broad scope on you feel me because when you look at certain basketball players like Allen Iverson who actually did have a dope album that I had leaked out or whatever that the NBA squashed a long time ago he actually had skill look at what Jamie Foxx did Jamie Foxx his first passion was actually music but yet the easiest way that he can get to the point that he's at now was to comedy to because there's always a stage out there for comedians to actually try to prove themselves and then from there that opened up the door to acting and he became an A-list celebrity actor but then he reached a certain level in the game that he could go back to his passion which was originally music and he showed that he had the core skill set to make quality music even ludicrous was a radio personality first and he used that to flip his way into the music industry where he pretty much created songs and then as a radio personality would play his songs and say oh that was ludicrous tell me how you guys felt about that so little Duval having the ability to make quality songs as he showed with the absolute hit living my best life is not something that's completely unique to the history of what hip hop is and I will say that the promotion that was built into this song was absolute genius you feel me because starting with that basic concept that black men don't cheat for those of you who don't know that's been a hashtag and a meme that's been going around twitter for a while that has been applied to a bunch of different scenarios like when many people believed that uh, Big Sean was cheating and that ultimately became a no scandal. The same thing with D Wade when many people believed that he was cheating on Gabrielle Union and such. That was a no scandal as well. Like this black men don't cheat thing, this has been going on for a lot longer than many people may actually believe. Therefore, it's no coincidence that this song particularly went viral on top of having Charlemagne the God as a feature because he clearly is the host of one of the most popular morning shows in the breakfast club you did so having him be a feature that means you get automatic promotion on top of this you dig like this was absolute genius but after that point man that's where this project ultimately goes wrong starting with that production where that production is supposed to be the super soulful hip-hop brand production but yet it's ultimately flawed and a bit dry. I'm really not a huge fan of it. As well as that hook where it's supposed to be a chant. But yet the chant really isn't like that like that. It is also lacking in lyricism. And yes I know it's the comedy genre of hip hop. So they're supposed to be telling jokes. And 
In many cases, these individuals will tell super cheesy jokes and all that stuff just to get a cheap laugh out of you, but yet I'm not even really chuckling like that. Like, maybe the best things that they're saying is when Charlemagne the God says, you know, it's like Fetty Wap winking, I don't see ish, like that wasn't that funny. Or how little Duvall was pretty much talking about a situation where a woman is trying to tell his main woman that he isn't ish, but yet his woman already knew that. Like that's a small joke that he's applying to himself. And neither one of these was all that funny, but yet these is like the big moments that's within this whole song. Overall, it's the concept and the promotion of this particular song that it was pretty much built in to be that is driving it into being what many are perceiving as a hit right now when reality stating that the music isn't that good. But still one I would definitely go ahead and recommend you to go ahead and peep out. But let's go ahead and jump into some of this news for everybody that's still here watching this show, man. So did you guys see that little Boosie not long ago was claiming racism when American Airlines wouldn't allow him to board a plane and such? And I found that to be funny to begin with because for those of you who've been watching the news shows that I was doing a while ago and such, Lil Boosie came out clearly as a fool coon, you did, And he always wanted to knock other people about injustices that's happening to them that was clearly based on race. But yet, now Lil Boosie want to claim racism because he couldn't catch a flight which I feel no sympathy for him at all. And the fact that American Airlines came out today telling them that, you know what, this wasn't based on race. He showed up late to the gate and they just closed it like they do to everybody and we wouldn't allow him to get on it, but we quickly booked him a alternate flight and such. So given that Lil Boosie has been full of crap in the past, and the fact that I have no sympathy for him, I'm honestly just laughing about this whole situation from top to bottom. I could really care less. Next, did you guys see that Power, the season 6 premiere, is going to be going down on August the 20th as they're premiering it in Madison Square Garden. And what's dope about it is there's going to be a 50 cent concert. Now, I don't know if the concert is leading up to the show or if it's going to be after. Odds are it's going to be directly after you did. But this is amazing promotion right here. I'm not entirely sure if this is the final season of Power. Looking at how the show has been progressing, it wouldn't shock me if this was the final season, man. But ultimately, it makes sense. Having a notable entertainer in the likes of 50 Cent to be able to help cross promote the season six of your show that's already on top, that has already proven to be at the top of all TV shows that's coming out and such, man. It's a win-win scenario, cross promotion, that 50 Cent is definitely going to benefit for, man. And this is the absolute genius that 50 Cent has been known for throughout his entire career. And the last thing in the news, man, today that came out that's rather interesting is how Kanye West and Sai High the Prince got albums that's coming out allegedly at the end of the summer, you dig? In which there's no particular dates, it's just news saying that they've been working on this so we are going to get something finally from these individuals. Which isn't that shocking because it had to be about a year or so to the day that it was Surgical Summer that they was doing all of the albums back to back to back and stuff anyway. So it is about time. But I am interested to see what comes out of it, especially seeing the whole uh, Sunday service. I'm wondering if Kanye is implementing any of that into this new project or will it be completely original off the wall like he's been consistently doing as of lately, you did. But we'll see. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there, and you can go to downloadpads.com that's down there to read today's article.